Okay, here's where we left off last time is basically I've got my main or the the large um, ball control um, selected and I see my keyframes down below. I also see how they're showing me those keyframes on this motion trail that I have turned on in my um, option box. So I like the timing of this. I've got three good bounces, like the arcs are pretty good too. And now what I want to get into is um, squashing and stretching this guy. And so I'm going to look back at this reference again and see where the squash or the stretching and the squashing actually occur. And I'm going to work with one at a time. We'll deal with the squashes first. More velocity equals more squash. Less velocity, less squash, maybe hardly any at all. And so the squash is a part where it's hitting the ground. That's what I'm going to be concerned with right now. So let's take a look at that. And let's move this into place. First squash is going to be about 15. And in my opinion, maybe this is a little too spread out. So what I could do is if I'm not happy with the location of these particular keyframes, too slow on that first drop, then what I can do is I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard. I'm going to click and drag across my keys and I highlighted a bunch of them. I see them now as white lines, my keyframes. And from this middle control, I can shift them all forward, which is good. I want to shift them all forward because I think that first drop, when I had it set at 15, notice as I change this to the left, that number changes on my motion trail, 12, 11, 10, okay? But I don't really want to adjust all these other frames so what I could do is drag this control on my timeline and notice that it won't change my initial frame still on 10 and I could stretch these other guys out further. So let's see. And the same thing would happen from this side. If I stretch it out this way, it would not affect so much these keyframes, but it would stretch these out on this side. So let's click away here and play this. That's pretty cool. Not too bad. Maybe some more adjustments of these guys, but we'll get to that later. So notice when I click away from the ball, my keyframes disappear. Those keyframes are specific to this control. And once we get into working with other controls, if I go to keyframe 11 where this first squash is, I'm going to deal with this control right here, the top squash control. Notice when I clicked on that, no more keyframes because I haven't made any keyframes for this tool or for this control. I'm going to hit W and I'm going to use this and squash it down. Um, and there I go. I'm going to exaggerate this. That's one of the principles, right? So I'm going to exaggerate this and I'm going to hit S. And so now look what happens. Now I've just got a pancake the whole time because that's the only keyframe that I've created. So I'm going to undo that control Z. And I want to go back to zero and I want to set this first frame S, right? Then I'm going to change to here, squash it down, hit S. But now look what happens. It immediately, it immediately squashes whenever I do that. I don't want that to happen. I do that last one, the frame right before 11, is 10. I'm going to maintain the shape of this ball on 10. I'm going to maintain the shape of this ball on 12 and hit S. On 11, I'm going to squash this down in keyframe. So now it squashes and bounces. Boing, right? Maybe I want to have a little bit of squash on 12. So I want it to go back to normal shape on 13. S. On 12, I'm going to add a little bit of squash. So I moved it back and added a little bit. Maybe there's a little rebound, right? Back to normal. It goes back to 28 on that bottom part. 27, I'm going to hit keyframe. On 29, I'm going to hit keyframe. 28, I'm going to squash it as much as the first bounce. 
and then 41 it hits again so on 40 I'm going to hit the keyframe so it keeps this shape and that way on 42 I'm going to put the keyframe again and on 41 where it actually hits the ground I'll squash just a tiny bit so let's take a look at what that looks like cool it's missing some things we need some stretch in there but that we can work with that so let's take a look at where we can start stretching and maybe even tilting this ball so for this what I want to do is select my bottom control and the same thing as before, I'm going to hit S on this zero frame so it maintains this shape. And then I'm going to move on my timeline. Notice that none of the other keyframes are there. Let's say right about here, it starts to twist a little bit, right? It's going to start to add a little um, curve, I say, to it. Um, sorry, I undid a bunch of things just now. Um, I don't know why. I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to hit that um, keyframe S. I'm going to go down. Where is this going to be mostly stretched out? Right about here. And so I'm going to stretch this out. And I'm going to hit S. Now, when I did that, look what happened. Now I can tilt this guy. I'm going to tilt it in the direction that it's falling. I'm going to hit S again. That's pretty cool. I want that tilt to start. It actually does start right where I want it to. It works out pretty well. But I want to add more tilt to it right here. So I'm going to hit S. And then I'm going to tilt it. S. And it does a pretty good job of following that path. Now the problem is, is this. It squashes a bit. I don't like that. Okay. So what I want to do is it squashes here. I do want it to stretch on this one. So I'm going to return it this way. You know what? No, I'm going to wait until 13 and then I'm going to stretch it out. And then I'm going to hit the keyframe. Notice that it kind of changed the way my initial squash looked. We can go back and adjust that later. So now, here's a problem. What if I wanted to get back to this normal shape again? Up here, like on 21. Here's how I can do that. I can go up here in my channel box. And I can hit zero and zero and bring it back to its normal shape. And then I can hit S. So it now naturally goes back from its stretch to that ball. Now I want to go back to a stretch again. It squashes on 28, but on 27, I want it to stretch. So I'm going to hit S here, stretch it out, tilt it, not as much stretch as the first fall. Maybe I want to add a little bit more tilt here, S, and then I got to redirect it. Squash right there, and then it goes this way. I'm going to tilt it, bring it up a little bit. And then keyframe that. Up at 36, it should be at the top again. So I'm going to center this. I'm going to hit the zeros on my channel box up here to bring it back to its normal shape. And then S. When I hit S, notice that it all turns red again. 41, it squashes. 40 should have it. A little bit of stretch, a little bit of tilt, and then S. And then it squashes, but not quite as much as what it should from before. So on that frame, I have to make some adjustments. 
and tilt it back this way. Hit S. Same thing on frame 28. That looks good. Frame 11. A little bit of a tilt back. It's a little low also. Um, the placement of that is. And I can adjust that. Now what I want to do is adjust where this ball is located. So I want to bring this guy back up. On, I want to actually not bring him back up. I want to re-squash him. So I'm, I've grabbed that top control again. He's already squashed, but that means on the bottom one, I have to squash him here. Squashing him. S. 28. Squash it. S. 41. Slight squash. S. I like that. It has a fun kind of movement to it. Right amount, good amount of like exaggeration. That really stands out um, when I'm playing it slow. But it doesn't really, it's only there for like a split second. It's enough to feel like the ball has some like elasticity to it. If you don't like how much exaggeration there is, you can undo it. You can take that out a little bit and re keyframe it. Maybe it's not as exaggerated now. But that's a good motion. That's a good movement. Good exaggeration. Good use of arcs. Slow in, slow out with the addition of these frames and squash and stretch. It's a pretty solid little motion, little movement here. Something looks like a little slippy right around here. Like it's too, maybe that next frame should not be an instant. Maybe not an instant uh, stretch. Maybe it should be a little bit of a. Still a little bit of a squash. And then the one after it, maybe that's where it stretches more. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So have fun with this. Come up with a new path, a new way, new fun way that you can bounce this ball off of something um, and play around with it. Um, not looking for something that looks exactly like this. We've done a, a squash and stretch with a ball before. This is 3D, but I want you to have fun with it. Do something different, not just a three bounce on the ground. Um, use your graph editor. Uh, we went over a little bit how to do that. Um, use your um, different control points and keyframes. Remember that every keyframe is not going to show up on every control point. Um, it's basically going to be there just for that. The keyframes are only going to show up for that specific control point. That's something important to know. So next thing to do is to create a play blast, which is a way that you can show your animation here without having to fully render everything out. So I'm going to get my camera view in place. I'm going to right click down here on the timeline. And one thing that's important is make sure that you go to playback speed and play every frame max real time. That will give you a realistic view of this, right? Um, now, when you go to play blast and you can click on this window right here and a little pop-up shows up. All of this is fine. It's going to be a format. AVI is what we want, not image. So AVI. Um, we're going to make sure that this is selected, save to file, and then you're going to click browse and choose a place in your student drive to save this movie file. And you're going to give it a name, ball bounce 101 is what I'm going to call mine, and then save. And then you can do play blast, and it's going to run through your animation. I say pretty quick. It's a lot quicker than it would be if it were um, actually um, rendering everything out. So I'm going to pause this until this finishes. Okay, so now that it's done, it automatically popped up this uh, video file and it plays through my animation that I just created. 
So it's an AVI, and this is something that you can submit for this assignment. Um, make sure that your ball is doing all the principles. I should see um, that you know how to use the motion trail, your graph editor, um, and that you've gotten creative with how your ball is bouncing through the scene. Other than that, this file right here is going to be what you end up turning in for the um, assignment. And we'll see you next time.